In this lecture, we are going to define what analytics and data mining are. What is business analytics? I'm sure that you have heard many great stories about how organizations are using business analytics to improve their effectiveness. For example, companies like Amazon, Walmart, or 1-800-Flowers.com use business analytics to find customer insights, drive new revenue ideas, and predict what customers will want, and then target campaigns to fill these needs. An integrated data foundation developed by these companies have dramatically reduced the time and efforts it takes to perform analysis, share results, and convert findings to business strategies. For example, instead of analyzing sales and customer service information after a major holiday, the company can now see what's happening in real time and adjust its offerings accordingly. Beyond customer retail, analytics is also widely used. Here's another example, Passor Aerospace, a provider of decision support technologies for the aviation industry, offers flight arrival estimate service called Wright ETA. It calculates arrival time by analyzing publicly available data about weather, flight schedules, and other factors with proprietary data the company has collected. Its data warehouse contains an immense body of multidimensional flight data spanning more than a decade. Using sophisticated analysis and pattern recognition technologies, Wright ETA essentially works by asking itself what happened all the previous times a plane approached this airport under these conditions. Airlines that use this service are able to virtually eliminate gaps between estimated and actual arrival times of flights. This allows airlines to save millions of dollars annually and improve customer and employee satisfaction at the same time. Well, these are just a few of the countless success stories of business analytics. And the power of business analytics goes far beyond the retail and the aviation industries. In a Harvard Business Review article, Thomas Davenport, a prominent business and IT consultant, claimed the data scientist to be the sexiest job of the 21st century. According to a recent study by Accenture, Two-thirds of executives from major U.S. companies say that analytical capabilities need to be improved at their organizations. And McKinsey and Company predicts a job market shortage of 1.5 million managers with big data and analytics expertise in today's market. So today, businesses are intrigued about how big data can revolutionize their businesses. This module gives you an overview of business analytics and demystifies some of the misunderstandings that business and IT professionals may have about business analytics. We are going to start by defining analytics and data mining, and then we are going to explain the proliferation of data and how this impacts the need for good analytics. We will then identify some of the key challenges of data mining, name some applications where analytics are helpful, and also name some of the applications where analytics are not helpful. And at the end, we'll conclude by explaining some of the common pitfalls of analytical practice. Let's start with a simple question. I'm sure a lot of you have probably seen this example before as it is one of the classic cases of data mining, where companies are able to identify somewhat unexpected insights by sifting through a large amount of data. It's a fill-in-the-blank question. People who buy beer at a grocery store also tend to buy blank. Any guesses? Well, some of you may already know the answer to this question because you probably read it in a business case or article somewhere. 
what they found out by sifting through millions or even billions of transactions at grocery stores over a period of many years is that people who buy beer at a grocery store also tend to buy diapers. It does not mean that everyone who buys beer buys diapers. It just means that these customers have a higher likelihood than other customers to purchase diaper products. Grocery stores used a technique called a market basket analysis to analyze what people put in their shopping carts to find out that information. They often find that beer and diapers happen to appear in the same shopping carts. When something that is interesting like this happens repeatedly, it tends to get people's attention. Imagine that you are an executive at Costco or Walmart. How surprised or excited would you be when you hear information like that? Do you have any theories about why that's the case? You may have a lot of different theories about why that's the case, but no one really knows for sure why this happens. But does the reason behind this association really matter? Well, no matter why this association happens, the relationship we found between beer and diapers is very useful, especially from a business perspective. So, I have a follow-up question for you. How many different ways can you use the information about the association between beer and diapers to profit if you run a retail store? Take a moment to think about this question. How many ways can you come up with? I bet you have come up with many product placement ideas for cross-sell and upsell using this information. Some people may suggest putting the beer aisle next to the diaper aisle to make it convenient for customers to pick up both products. And some people may suggest putting beer and diapers at the two opposite ends of the retail store, so that customers have to walk past every aisle to get the two products. And along the way, they may pick up a few things that they did not plan to purchase before arriving at the store. One interesting upsell idea I have heard is to put high-margin upscale diapers next to the beer aisle so that some customers may decide to purchase these diapers because they are in a hurry or too lazy to find the diapers they normally purchase. As you can see, the possibilities are limitless. I like this example because it teaches us a few important things about business analytics and data mining. First, it kind of defines what business analytics is. Business analytics is the extensive use of data, statistical and quantitative analysis, explanatory and predictive models, and fact-based management to drive decisions and actions. As you can see, business analytics is an interdisciplinary field. It draws its theories and techniques from business management, decision science, statistics, information systems, machine learning, and a number of other fields. The goal of business analytics is to provide fact-based decision-making. Previously in business, most decisions were made based on the intuition and experience of the senior managers. This led to two issues. First, decision-making is concentrated at the top of the organization leaving decision-making to only a small number of people, and most people in the organization are the executors of the decisions. Second, the outcomes of these decisions are often hit and miss due to the subjective nature of the decisions. With business analytics, intuitive decision-making is replaced or complemented by fact-based decision-making. Information technology and access to data are empowering more people in the organization to participate in the decision-making process. And at the same time, the success rate of decisions 
has also been significantly improved. In addition, interesting relationships, patterns, and trends are being discovered from the data, and that leads to more effective and innovative business strategies. Data mining is at the heart of business analytics. It is the process of exploring and modeling relationships in large amount of data. Many patterns and relationships are often too complex or inconspicuous for us to discover intuitively. We have never before in the history have access to so much data, both historical and real time. Modern computer technologies have given us the ability to store, analyze, and distribute large data sets more efficiently than we were ever able to do before. Second, this example shows that data mining is a data-driven approach, which is different from the traditional theory-driven approach. The theory-driven approach requires that you first come up with a hypothesis, then collect the data and perform the analysis to either confirm or reject your hypothesis. So let me ask you, how many of you would know to look for a relationship between beer and diapers? Well, not many, right? Using a data-driven approach, we do not start with any predefined hypothesis and simply let the data tell the story. This approach tends to lead to interesting and unexpected findings. As we will discuss later in this class, this approach is called unsupervised learning, which is one of the key data mining techniques we will discuss in this course. Third, this example teaches us about the differences between these three terms, data, information, and knowledge. Data is the raw fact, in this case. It is the transactional data that record what each customer purchased during each of the shopping trips. It is detailed, has many rows and columns, but is also hardly useful in identifying patterns or make decisions. Information is extracted from the raw data through some quantitative analysis techniques, in this case, market basket analysis. The information here is the association between beer and the diapers. However, while it is interesting, simply knowing the association does not do the business any good. Knowledge is the actionable strategies for business based on the information or insights that can produce repeatable results. In this case, knowledge is what we can do with the information that people who buy beer also tend to buy diapers. The goal of business analytics is to reach actionable strategies, not just interesting findings. Also, a little stats about the impact of analytics on a company's bottom line. The consulting company, DCI, found that the return on investment for predictive analytics is 250%. That is $2.50 return on each dollar invested, which is very impressive. As we mentioned before, business analytics is a very in-demand job field. One Harvard Business Review article calls data scientists the sexiest job of the 21st century because it is so in-demand and hard to find people who have these skills. To become an analytics professional, it requires you to have skill sets in the domains of information technology, business, quantitative methods, and machine learning. To become an effective one, not only do you need to have the technical skills, but intense curiosity, problem-solving skills, business know-how, and the ability to tell a good data story. In this course, we will try to help you develop these skills. So what constitutes business analytics? 
and what impacts business analytics has on businesses. Davenport and Harris have provided us with some very good answers to these questions. The figure in this slide shows you the differences between business analytics and the traditional reporting, which is something that most organizations are already doing. While traditional reporting focuses on answering the questions of what happened, analytics tend to focus on asking the questions of why this happened, what will happen, and what can be done about it. The techniques also go beyond simple tabulation and summarizing of data. The techniques are more sophisticated and focus on statistical analysis, predictive modeling, pattern recognition, forecasting, simulation, and optimization. As companies go from basic reporting to basic analytics and advanced analytics, it increasingly creates more competitive advantages that enable it to be successful. The distinctions between these different forms of analytics are synonymous to the differences between what are commonly known as descriptive, predictive, and prescriptive analytics, where descriptive analytics focuses on what happened in the past and why, predictive analytics builds models based on historical data to predict the future, and then prescriptive analytics provides guidance by evaluating possible scenarios and recommends the approaches that may lead to optimal outcomes. Another model provided by Davenport and Harris is equally insightful. This table illustrates the types of questions addressed by modern business analytics. They call these two dimensions time, which includes the past, present, and the future, and the innovation, which includes information and insights. Obviously, insights are more interesting and harder to discover than simple information. The boxes list the types of questions and the analytics techniques that can be used to address them. For example, to answer questions about what happened. For example, what was the sales last year? What was the best-selling product last quarter? And who was our best customer in terms of profit last month? Traditional reporting was the most effective analytics technique. To address how and why did it happen, for example, why did the customer purchase these products? If we increase the price, what impact would have on the sales volume of these products? Modeling and experimentation techniques can be used. The resulting models can be used to inform other decisions, such as what the next best action should be. For example, which customer should we reach out to in order to increase our response rate? Or how should we adjust the price level of the product to improve profitability? The models can be used to generate recommendations to business strategies. And often, the business world is full of surprises and uncertainty, which can lead to a multitude of possible decisions. Optimization and simulation techniques can help recommend appropriate course of action.